Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Video Game Movie Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a film from 2006. That movie is Silent Hill. Now, I have to say up front, I haven't played a whole lot of the Silent Hill games. In fact, uh, the only one I think I've ever played any of is Silent Hill 2. And what I played of it, I really liked. And at some point, I am going to have to get a copy and actually finish it and actually, you know, play it all the way to completion. But, but what I played of it was really good. Unfortunately, I know nothing else about the rest of the Silent Hill, you know, series. I know absolutely nothing. I've heard mixed things about this movie, but I, but I will say that even though it's mixed things, most people at least have told me that the movie is okay. The movie's watchable. It really is a serviceable horror film. So at least I have that going for me. I see that as a huge positive. But the only way I'm going to find out if this damn thing's honestly any good is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that right now. So without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Silent Hill. So, her daughter's drawing really dark, fucked, like, fucked up shit, and instead of taking her to a therapist, maybe seeing if there's something mentally wrong with her, you're gonna go on a road trip to a ghost town because she screams it in her nightmares. I totally understand, guys, the movie has to find a way to get the people into Silent Hill, but, you know, this is probably, like, one of the dumbest ways you could have. I mean, seriously, with... With all the shit going on, take her ass to therapy. Do not take her on a road trip to a ghost town. That just sounds so stupid. But I'm hoping, hoping that they actually are able to build off that and do something really cool with this. So something that Silent Hill has always been known for is creepy is creepy horrors within within the town creepy creatures that are just supposed to dig at your very soul and just creep you out what the hell does this movie give us an army of charred squealing babies not not quite the kind of thing i was expecting i was expecting something you know actually creepy not kind of shit You know, guys, there's something that's really missing in this movie that would really make it a Silent Hill film. Actually, it's, actually, it's missing a lot of things. It's missing, it's missing atmosphere. It's missing tension. It's missing, you know, like psychological horror. It's missing all of these things. The only thing we have that even remotely connects this thing to Silent Hill, outside of a couple of scant names, is we have a foggy, possibly haunted town. Uh, that, to me, guys, is not enough to really make this thing a Silent Hill film, but so far, that is all that the movie's given me. Alright, guys, so they've added one more thing that uh, sort of ties into Silent Hill. Uh, Pyramid Head is here. I don't understand why, since I could have sworn Pyramid Head was supposed to be the physical fucking personification of James fucking Sunderland's violent, violent, you know, sexual urges. James Sunderland's not even in this film. I don't know why he's here outside of fan service. And really, guys, after almost a fucking hour of boring, tedium sh boring tedious shit, uh, the last thing I'm looking for is some shallow, unnecessary fan, you know, service. I would rather... I would, I would rather actually have a story that would that would go somewhere. I'd rather have, you know, actual tension, tension and terror befitting the Silent Hill name. But so far I'm I'm getting none of that and I'm kind of dreading the next hour. Okay, so Pyramid Head just skinned, you know, somebody by just ripping off their skin in like one fell rip. That was really cool. Uh, again, I kind of wish that the rest of the movie was, you know, that interesting. I kind of wish once more that we had the tension and the psychological terror that comes from Silent Hill. But, hey, at least we got to watch Pyramid Head skin fucking somebody in about, you know, like a second and a half. That, that was really cool. And now they've shoehorned in the, I guess, sexy demon nurses from Silent Hill. God, you know, guys... Again, it's totally cool that, that you want to shoehorn in, like, fan fucking service into this movie. 
But really, that should actually have taken a back seat to writing, you know, to writing, you know, a fascinating story and actually putting in the tension that everybody who, who has played a Silent Hill game would fucking expect. And you didn't fucking bother with that. So basically, so basically, so basically all of this is fan service completely wasted because it's sitting in the middle of a boring, tedious, by the fucking numbers horror, you know, film, and it's beginning, guys, to just grate on me just how dull this thing really is. Alright, I, I totally understand, guys, that this fucking cult's got this weird, like, boner for burning, you know, witches. My question, what the hell is up with their method of burning witches? What the hell is up with the whole, like, stick them on a fucking ladder and then lean them, like, 20 feet above the flame? Why not tie them to a stake and burn them the way that everyone thinks that witch burnings happen? Why not do it that way? Why not do something that makes a little bit more sense? It doesn't even look cool, guys. I just saw somebody burn, and it looked fucking stupid. But then again, stupid is starting to be sort of, you know, like the mantra for this goddamn movie. But, but, but still, what the fuck is it? What the fuck is up with this, like, ladder method of burning these supposed witches? I'm trying to wrap my head around it, and it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Well, guys, that was Silent Hill, or something pathetically attempting to pose a Silent Hill. Let me shut that off. All right. I'm going to start with that. I know, guys, I don't normally talk about loyalty to a film's source when I'm talking about these kinds of uh, fucking adaptations. But God damn it, guys, I'm going to tell you, Silent Hill, again, what little of Silent Hill 2 I had, I had the opportunity to play. Uh, I, I learned a lot out of that small time playing Silent Hill 2. Um, first of all, it... It was a game that was steeped in both visceral and psychological horror. Uh, something that this film is lacking in both ends. This thing has zero psychological horror. It has almost nothing in terms of visceral horror outside of, oh, looky, looky, monsters, ooh. Uh, instead of actually trying to tell us a story about somebody whose you know, life has been royally screwed and they basically are... Uh, basically sent to sent to Silent Hill as penance, which which from what I've read is kind of sort of a running theme across most games, not just two. Um, instead of giving us that, it starts off kind of leading in leading into that, and then about three quarters of the way through, the movie comes to a full stop and goes, "Okay, listen, we seriously didn't even we seriously didn't even want to do a Silent Hill movie. We kind of wanted to do." something involving witches and a cult, so we are just going to give you about seven minutes of backstory right, right fucking now. So, uh, you, so you, so you basically don't even have to worry about all the Silent Hill goofiness. All of that's totally done. The moment, guys, that the movie comes to a dead fucking stop and decides to tell us the story about this fucking kid who was, who was in Silent Hill and was a witch and was persecuted by all of the other students and was burned alive, this and this and yada, yada, yada. The moment that you hear all of that. Every last shred of semblance to Silent Hill comes to a dead screaming goddamn stop except for the fucking fog. The fog is the only thing that stays that even tries to remotely connect this goddamn thing to anything Silent Hill-ish. My god. Alright, so, um, so... This thing sucks as a Silent Hill movie because outside of a handful of real, real lazy fucking references, I swear to God, guys, you cannot make Silent Hill and go, ooh, look, Pyramid Head, ooh, look, the nurses, ooh, look, Bachman Street. No, none of that shit's gonna fucking fly when you don't have the atmosphere of Silent Hill, okay? You can totally have the look of Silent Hill all you fucking well want, but if you don't have the atmosphere that makes those games as awesome as they are, as great as they are, as fun as they are to play, at least as fun as Silent Hill 2 was. Again, I'm only basing the others on shit that I have read, but still, the atmosphere of Silent Hill is what makes that franchise great. When you have a movie that has none of that fucking atmosphere, has almost no shock, terror, or horror in it, and you're left with just basically a handful of ultra-lazy fucking references that are all literally thrown, thrown to the side to make way for some half-baked bullshit story about witch burning, that, guys, is when you know you're not watching a Silent Hill movie. You, I, I swear to God, guys, this thing was not 
I swear, th this fucking script cannot have been a Silent Hill script the first time that it was written. I'm almost convinced that whoever the hell wrote this, and however many assholes wrote this, uh, basically we're coming up with some idiotic story about a fucking about a fucking like witch burning cult in a spectral town and a missing daughter and then some fuckwit at Sony looked at them and said okay well the script is really good now we need you to make it into a Silent Hill movie okay thanks and then just sort of gave them like a small list of references which had to be in there including Pyramid Head the nurses Bachman Street the hotel you know, all of the shit that you know stands out in the minds of people who've ever played Silent Hill you know and just you know, like, and just go and fucking ramrod all of that in, uh, and you can still have your shitbag story about a witch burning cult. Why not? Uh, yeah. So, anyway, this thing absolutely fails miserably as a Silent Hill movie, but does it function as just a plain old by the numbers horror film? No, because once more, uh, a horror film should have either psychological or visceral terror in it. And this thing had neither. This thing, guys, basically had a whole lot of blood and a whole lot of rusty shit, but it had nothing I would say is terrifying. When we have people who are being ripped to shreds by sentient barbed fucking wire, that honestly, guys, should be like the coolest goddamn thing you will ever see. No, it's actually incredibly dull when handled here, but that has partially to do with special effects. And I'll get to special effects in just a sec. This thing, guys, sucks as a horror movie, and it is downright offensive as a fucking Silent Hill film. Now, with all of that in mind, uh, oh wait, I do want to touch on one other thing with the acting. Why the fuck is Sean Bean even in this thing? What purpose does his character serve for three quarters of the goddamn movie? Okay, I, I guys, I'm going to tell you, every meaningful scene that, that he has. Okay, so we find out from him that he actually wants his daughter to be put in a hospital because of her dreams and her night terrors, and apparently her mother's taken her, it, her mother's taken this kid off, off of her fucking meds, which is making everything even worse. Her dad wants her daughter to be put in a hospital and treated so that way they can figure out what in the hell is wrong, you know, with her, and, you know, that is, and that is totally fine. That actually is uh, the will of a caring father. He then goes chasing after the two of them when uh, she goes and she kidnaps her, when Rose kid kidnaps her daughter and gallivants off to fucking Silent Hill for reasons. No, actually, and the reasons are because their daughter was screaming about Silent Hill in nightmares. That, I swear to God, is it. Anyway, so when so then when Sean Bean arrives at the fucking gate that she crashes through, the cops stop him and say and say and say that they found the jeep, but they didn't find the bodies. Uh, well, that kind of sort of sums it up right there. All right, at that point, any and all interest in his character stops. And since they found the Jeep, it also kind of spoils what happened to Rose and their fucking daughter. Which is honestly, guys, why the ending, as much honestly as they're trying to play out, the ending is this big fuck-off twist. You gave away your ending within the first 40 minutes, you worthless sacks of shit. Learn to fucking write. Oh my god. So anyway, yeah, I don't know why his character continues to be in the film. He serves no goddamn purpose. And every time that we cut to Sean Bean doing fuck all, the pacing in this film comes to a dead halt. The, and the only time that the film comes to, to, even, to even more of a stop is when, is when the movie, as I stated earlier, literally just throws up its hands and goes, Silent Hill? Pfft, fuck that shit. I am going to tell you a story about a fucking, about a fucking witch burning cult because fuck you, I want to tell a story about a witch burning cult. Oh, Jesus. All right, so yeah, that writing here is fucking shit as anything. It sucks as a horror film. It sucks as a fucking Silent Hill movie. This thing is terrible in terms of writing. It has nothing going for it. Now, with that said, the acting actually is halfway decent. I am going to grant, I am going to grant that, at least, with, uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of this thing, the acting at least is good. Oh, one more thing about, about writing. I totally know, guys, I'm probably going to keep on bouncing back to writing as more faults and failings continue to hit me. A thing about Silent Hill, a thing about Silent Hill that made it such a fucking powerful game, well, at least Silent Hill 2, again, uh, is the fact that you were isolated in this town, all right? 
You weren't collecting people like Dorothy and fucking Oz. So why the fuck is Rose collecting a small ragtag bunch of assholes as she's going through this haunted fucking town? Also, uh, this is more of like a story point. Uh, so, apparently, in the 70s, Silent Hill had this massive fire that killed hundreds of people, and it was this huge fire, and the, town had to be and the town had to be fucking evacuated. The fires are still burning underneath the city some 30 years later. So, if it was a fire that was violent enough to kill, to kill all of these people, and the fire is still burning, and all, then why the fuck are the buildings still standing? Why in the hell are the buildings all barely touched by flame if this fire was that bad? If this fire was that bad, and if there's still coal fires burning underneath the city 30 years after the goddamn fire, Silent Hill should be a smoking hole in the fucking ground. But hey, that honestly is more of a minor questionable thing that just sounded incredibly dumb. Anyway... Back over to acting. Acting here. Acting here is halfway decent, including from Sean Bean, who's just wasting fucking screen time. At least he's. At least he's. At least. At least his acting is decent as he's wasting time in the film. Uh, so yeah, guys, acting here is really good. I cannot fault this thing in terms of acting. I also cannot fault it in terms of camera work. The camera work here is really good. The lighting here. The lighting here actually is able to set a really nice, nice atmosphere, and it really does help capture the feel of Silent Hill. It's just that when the only thing that's trying to set the fucking, the fucking atmosphere is your goddamn lighting and your sets, uh, and your writing is failing at helping set it up, then you've wasted all of that time making the lighting and the sets work. Now, the sets here, I will say that everything which is set in, like, the darker end of Silent Hill, it all looks, it, 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 it all looks really good, and it does, and it does certainly look as if it crawled out of a Silent Hill game. So I am willing to grant them that. Uh, now, for the rest of the special effects that aren't the, uh, that, that, that aren't the common scene Silent Hill, you know, villains such as, or monsters such as, say, you know, like Pyramid Head and the nurses and that weird fucking thing with no fucking arms that just kind of sort of like twitches around, you know, like all of those look, look awesome. All of those look fine in terms of costuming and special effects. Uh, but what about everything else? Like, what about the sentient barbed fucking wire that is just murdering cultists left fucking right and center at the, at the end of the film? That looks awful. It really does. And the barbed wire, in certain shots, it doesn't even look like barbed wire. It kind of sort of looks, it kind of sort of looks more like licorice, which kind of sort of ruins all of the, you know, tension of people being ripped apart by fucking licorice. It just doesn't look right. Um, we have, especially in that scene, we have a ton of CG blood, uh, probably though the worst instance of it, because mind you, I have no problem if it's a fucking like, if it's a fucking like CG model, which is being fucking like ripped apart and you have CG blood spraying out, I am totally willing to let, to let that go. I am not willing to let fucking go though a stab wound, which has blood pouring out of it as if somebody turned on a goddamn faucet. And it looks like shit. And the blood is then spreading and it's then opening up this pit which sort of shows you the rusty, barbed fucking wire world of Silent Hill. You know, and that shot was fine. It's just the blood pouring out looked hideous. And that really, guys, is and that guys is like the one issue with, with, which this thing had is that is that there is, is that there are a handful of shots and that and that fucking one stands out that absolutely ruins the 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 overall look atmosphere and feel of this of of this movie and ruins it even more so than the piss poor writing does. This thing, guys, is a fucking joke from start to finish in terms of that. That guys and like that one shot amongst others absolutely ruins any hope this film has of trying to build any kind of atmosphere and it doesn't even matter if it's trying to build a silent hill style atmosphere or some stupid shit about a witch burning cult it doesn't really work it kind of sucks and it pulled me right out of the goddamn movie and then when we had people being being fucking ripped apart by bar, by by fucking licorice which was supposed to be barbed fucking wire uh, that honestly didn't friggin help any the final act in this movie i really hated the final act in this goddamn movie it ruined everything that could have possibly been built up and paid off um music the music here well first of all there is very very little you know you know music which is which is, which is totally fine, because that's honestly something that is used in, in order to build tension in, in fucking Silent Hill. Uh, 
but when music is used, it doesn't feel right. Allow me to explain. At one point, Rose wakes up and she's and she's inside a bowling alley and she's greeted by Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. I love Johnny Cash. Ring of Fire, one of my favorite Johnny Cash songs of all time. Ring of Fire has no fucking place in a Silent Hill movie, and I was questioning for about ten minutes after that, why the fuck is Ring of Fire playing in the, in the fucking bowling alley? It doesn't sound right, and it absolutely removes all of the atmosphere and all the feel that was built up to that point, and the film had to restart. This, guys, is the only time I am ever going to bitch about a Johnny Cash song being being featured in a film. I love Johnny Cash's music that fucking much. Ultimately, guys, when all is said and done, am I able to recommend Silent Hill? No. Fuck no. In fact, I am going to go one further. I can name you two goddamn movies that are more worthy of the title Silent Hill than this goddamn turd is. And they're both part of one of my favorite franchises of all time. Those two films are Hellraiser Inferno and Hellraiser Hellseeker. Both of those feel more like Silent Hill than this goddamn thing does. By all means, go out and check out both of those movies. I genuinely loved both of those. And once more, both of those are closer to Silent Hill than this goddamn thing was. And this thing's got and this thing's got the fucking name. It's got a major backing from Sony. And Hellraiser's Inferno and Hellseeker were direct-to-video films for fuck's sake. Low budget direct-to-video films. And they have and they have more stake and more claim to the term Silent Hill than this goddamn thing is. Process that. Holy fuck! Anyway, Silent Hill came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was Ariel, not a girl. Ariel, I thank you. Oh, by, oh, I'm sorry. Ariel, not a girl. I thank you. You can check out his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash TVB Robotnik Returns. Dude, uh, thank you. I, I had heard so many mixed things about this movie. I, I had heard people tell me it's great, and some people told me it was shit. Some people said that it was watchable. I wanted to know exactly where on that spectrum this thing was going to fall for me. And unfortunately, it fell way deep, way deep in, way deep into the shit end of that scale. But I honestly would not have known, dude, if you had if you if you hadn't have sent it in and for that I thank you once more. That is youtube.com slash user slash TVB Robotnik Returns. Now I mentioned Hellraiser Inferno and Hellraiser Hellseeker. I still have both of those on DVD. I'm going to go fucking watch those because, goddammit, I came here expecting to watch a Silent Hill movie and they gave me some stupid piddly bullshit about a witch-burning cult. Fuck this goddamn movie. I'm going to go watch something better. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.